Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three of ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Welcome, everybody, to the inaugural episode of the 2021 season of Mavs Moneyball Group Therapy. This is your friend, Kirk Henderson, coming to you live for the first time since last week. But for those of you who are longtime listeners, we've been doing this since about the middle of last year, where we come together and overreact at the end of every game. In some cases, we work through our feelings. In other cases, we just get mad. In the case of a preseason game, I thought it would be good to have, uh, you know, a little bit of practice where we get together and uh, talk about the game that we just watched. So uh, for those listening on the podcast, um, it's about 10, 15 central time. I just finished uh, wrapping up with Josh, but this is going to go up on our podcast feed sometime on Thursday afternoon. Uh, for a quick recap, the Mavericks started a bit of a uh, unorthodox starting five because let's see, Dorian Finney-Smith was out, Dwight Powell was out. It was just a, you know with like rest stuff, and so the the Mavericks played like Mo, like Moses Brown started. Um, a little bit weird at the first half, the first quarter. Mavericks couldn't really score any points. Uh, neither could the Jazz, but then they connected on a few late threes. Then in the second quarter, things seemed to loosen up a bit. Uh, Luka Doncic, you know, did his thing where he reminded everybody that he's really, really, really good at basketball. And then Jalen Brunson kind of helped take things the rest of the way home. Uh, The third quarter and then fourth quarter were a lot of young guys that played. Every single Maverick except for Trey Burke saw time on the floor. Uh, We got some fun uh, moments for, you know, like rookies that, you know, are kind of extremely unlikely to make the roster with the number of Mavericks. you know, guaranteed roster spots, but we had, we had fun all the same. Uh, the Mavericks just, you know, walked away with a one eleven one Oh one victory and they play again in two days. And, you know, beyond that, I'm, I, I really just, I enjoyed watching them play basketball. I thought that, uh, Porzingis moved very well. I wrote about that in the recap. I thought that, that Maxi Kleba looked like a human being, um, that could actually move side to side and attack the basket. That was fun. Uh, and past that, I I really didn't have a lot of takeaways. Josh was a little more heated on our podcast. Uh, I'm not going to give away for the listeners in the green room what he said. I'm interested to hear your guys' takes. So why don't you hit that request button, come up on stage, and we will, uh, you know, give me your comment, give me your question, and we're going to move through as many people we can in about a half hour. Just because it's preseason, I'm not really feeling like talking until like midnight or 1 a.m. like we used to. But we'll do this at some point during the year. 
Uh, coming up first, I have, uh, it looks to be, I don't recognize his name, uh, Ruben, who I hope is a first time caller. How you doing, Ruben? Hit that unmute button. Um, sometimes it insta-mutes you. All right, we will try to bring you up here in a bit if you want to try again. Okay, coming up next, we have Mr. Davis. How are we? Hello? Hi, how are you? Oh, hi. Um, so, I mean, I don't really got too much to say, but I don't want to overreact because it's the preseason, but I was watching um, the Chicago Bulls yesterday, and – they have a, like a lot of the players that I really thought would have fit well with the current roster we have. And they have like Lonzo, Caruso, DeRose, and they have like so many ball handlers and just the way they played. It's they're so flexible. And just watching us today, it's like I don't really have too much to nitpick besides Josh Green shouldn't be on the rotation right now. Ooh, but man. He was, I mean, his defense is good, but, like, his offense is so bad that anything he does, just, it's terrible. But, anyways, I just wanted to talk about, like, um, yeah, just, like, how much better our offense would look if we just had, like, you know, someone who could just, I don't know. I feel like we've already, like, dwelled on this, like, the entire offseason. But just watching the Bulls yesterday and just how, like. Yeah, they annihilated they play. look yeah. so good. <laughs> just like not just not even not even DeRozan or Lonzo, just like a Caruso on the roster. Yeah. Would be like everything. I got, I got excoriated for wanting for wanting Caruso, but he's like he's huge, he's a big defender. They you know, they pushed all their chips in the middle of the table. And I think this is gonna be one of the years where the East is actually better than the West. And so I think they have a pretty clear cap, but I also think they're gonna be a lot of fun. And one of the things that we as a fan base, I think, particularly a heart like the hardcore fans, the people that pay attention all year round have sort of struggled with, is we're just watching a lot of the same guys. It's why, like, you know, a friend of the program, Dalton Trigg, everybody teases him so much about loving Moses Brown. Well, Moses Brown is something different. And, you know, after a while, you just kind of, you know, when you watch 200 games of the same rotation, you want to you wanna see something else. And, and I can get it. But I did feel – a fair amount of, of optimism in like that second and part of the third quarter where I felt that the offense was, was, was fun. Like they're doing some things, particularly like off ball cutting for guys. That was a lot like that. That just hasn't happened in last year's just a lot of standing around. So it was, it was really fun to see that sort of stuff. And I get, you know, your, your kind of frustration with the comparison point, but then you watch Lucas score 19 points in 16 minutes and it's like, Oh, okay. He's better than every single. So, well, thank you for coming yeah. up. Do you got anything else? No, that that was really it. I just wanted to say something a little. Oh, of course. Your audio is great, by the way. Sometimes we struggle with people. So, thanks for coming up, and I hope you come back. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to give my man Ruben a try again. Uh, so, for new time people, sometimes it gets a little finicky with your headset. So, just it, you'll notice if uh, you're talking uh, when your circle's up on stage and, like, there's a – it's like if you any of you play Xbox or PlayStation, when you're talking, your icon is is lit up. So just notice that. And if you're not, if you don't see it, then your your audio is not coming through. So Ruben, how are you? Sorry, Kurt. Yeah, that's I, okay. I was like uh, looking at the top. So there's two uh, two mute buttons, one by your face and like one at the bottom. So I, yeah, that, I got confused. Sorry about that. But, Kurt, I went to the game tonight. It, it is my birthday today. Turned 35. Thank you. I made it. <laughs> anyway. Happy birthday. That's but, exciting. <laughs> I, I was like, uh, I'll wait to, you know, do the whole party thing this weekend. But I, I just want to just go see my Mavs uh, in person. But um, I'll get straight to the point. We cut. We cut to the basket now. I I had never seen so much cutting to the basket I I thought I was the uh, only one seeing it. Then you just said it. Um, but I loved it. Um, and in person, uh, Moses Brown is huge. So big. It's it's laughable. Like, he looked like prime Kareem on television at times. Yes. He's just <laughs> I mean, I was like, what? is he 7'3"? Do we have, like, three seven three people on our team? I, I was like, wait a minute. But all right, there is like a 
there is like a slight downer to him. Like I noticed, um, I'm not sure who number, I think it was 30 or 20. Anyway, the other five for the Jazz, um, he was like, Moses has no shot. So I'm just, I'll just stay in the paint. And that's kind of his downside if he does start or even sniffs the second team. Um, yeah, that's Yudoka Azubuki, and he, I'm pretty sure he played at Kansas. He's like a 1990s center. He's almost 300 pounds and like six foot 11. It uh, just sort of exposes his weaker parts of his game. And sorry to anybody who can hear my dog chewing on it. <laughs> no, but yeah, he, he knew how to play Moses Brown, like to kind of, kind of erase him pretty much. He was like, I'll just stay, I know you're not going to shoot it, so I'll just play you like uh, somebody would play Ben Simmons with like pretty disrespectful, but that's the only thing about Moses Brown uh, game that I saw that maybe, you know, Willie, Willie showed like a little, a little shot, you know, he, <laughs> that was, that was YouTube sensation. Willie. <laughs> right. And uh, you know, uh, in the crowd, we're like, yeah, shoot it. Just, just keep shooting. You're going to learn one day, but yeah, Willie, don't don't shoot it anymore. But um, I had a great time. I went there to go see Luke and KP. Uh, what I will say about KP, he can. It looks like he can move uh, mostly on defense. On offense, he still looks like that's he, okay. Yeah, the defense. I, I, if he looks good on defense, I will not say a nasty thing about his post ups. Yes, promise. because yes. he was a, he was kind of impactful. Like he was hunting dudes for for you know shot blocks, and yes. I just I love the way he looked. That's the first time I felt that way since the bubble, and I could. Yes. No, well, I well it came back to me. I started picturing like I started having bubblegum dreams. I was like, wait, is he actually blocking shots? He's scooting over to. A man that's not his, like to like a smaller man. Even though you know he tried to do a a couple things on offense, it just didn't. He kind of fell down. I think twice tonight. I'm not sure, but um, he, he did fall it. down. I wasn't gonna yeah. bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks like like, baby, he looks like a baby giraffe when that shit happens. I'm just like right. too tall to fall down. <laughs> and I was like, I was in my seat, and I was like, no, Luca, don't pass it. He's too far out. I was like, no, he's too far out. He's too close to the three point. It's like you got to – looking at KP now, like on defense, he looks like he's getting back to his uh, his New York Knicks self. But on offense, he's still a little bit timid. Like, like I, I just want to yell at KP and just say, hey, you either got to like – don't try to don't try to dribble too much when you're too close to the three-point line. When you're – when Luka gives you the ball by the three-point line, he's wanting you to shoot it. Absolutely. He doesn't want you to like – he doesn't want you to try to be like KD and, you know, try to get past the guy. No, he wants you to shoot it. But when he gives it, when he gives it to uh, anybody that gives it to KP near the paint, do what you want to do. Like you can kind of do what you don't want to do, but you have to score. Don't try to pass it to anybody, but you have to score because you you tried to pass it and you fell down and the seat went from under you. <laughs> Well, so so tell me something since you were at the game, and I'm I think I'm just partial to this because I have a preposterous TV and I think it looks good. How good does that court look in real life? Oh my God, I like the like. I don't think the old school like Maverick was on the ends last year, was it? Or maybe uh, I don't remember I, it. I just remember looking at that like because the green is just so striking in relation to the blue. And I, you know, one day they're going to do a full rebrand, and I just hope they just do full retro because it's pretty. Yeah, and it, and I think they did it. it so it kind of reminded me of, and and I don't think the Reunion Arena ever had that uh, Maverick as big as it was, but I think they did the court specifically for those seventy five. Uh, was it the seventy fifth anniversary jerseys? Mm-hmm. Like when they wear those jerseys on that court. We're going to be like, holy. I'm going to be I'm so excited because <laughs> the, the real trick about nostalgia is to not make things look how they used to look. It's to make them look how your brain remembers it. Yes. And even if you're wrong, because like I, this is going to be a terrible comparison that half the group is going to be annoyed with. I'm playing like the re-release of Diablo 2, which is like a 20 year old game. And you can make the graphics look like they did whenever it came out. And it's like, oh, no, this is not what I remember. But then it's like you're playing the game and it's like, oh, that's what I remember. 
And that's how it feels when I'm looking at this Maverick stuff. Like, the, I, have you seen the white uniform stuff? And then the, the incredible uh, shooting shirt that Jason Kidd's wearing in the mask right. shop. Uh, right. I, I'm just so, I'm pumped. I, I'm going to buy all of this stuff if I can. Well, they were like, they had the all white uh, last year's jerseys on clearance. But yeah, you're not the only one that played Diablo. I was on the first Diablo. So, and then it went to all on, and I just like kind of gave up and started playing like Age of Empires or something like that. Sure. <laughs> but, um, but no, I, I definitely went to the game, had a great time. Uh, and I wanted to say one more thing. I'm, uh, hey, Trey Berg. Oh my goodness. Uh, Carly Jones, uh, pretty much. Like, if you don't come back the next Look day, oh, me. my gosh. He looks electric, like, in person. Like, he looked like a – like, he's been here before, almost. Like, well, he, what's really killing – what's really killing me is that Carlick Jones, the other rookies, look better than the rookies that the Mavericks drafted. And, the, you know, like, Tyrell Terry – you know, I know we've all talked about how Trey Burke might be the one gone. Like Tyrell Terry's making a case for himself just by not being here. Personal reasons aside, like you have to be available as a professional athlete, and he's not. And Carlick Jones comes out and scores points. The other rookies, I don't want to, I don't want to crush the guy's name. I've not learned it yet. The the player from Oregon. Um, oh, uh, 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 UG, uh, you, yeah, oh UG. my god! And we got to get Chris Arnold to. Learn his last name. It, I was like Amarui. Was it bad? Amarui. He tried. <laughs> he tried tonight, but it was just like just call him OG. OG. Sure. But um, one thing. Fair. Fair and Hunt was fun. Like it's just oh, there's a lot. There's yes. a lot of fun. Oh my yeah. god! Like um, another player that don't try to assist when somebody passes you the ball, score or you know just do your thing with it. Don't try to get an assist on yourself, but. He was yamming this ball all night. Like he had one um he went up for and uh and it just kind of went off his fingers. But he is a fast break monster. Um and what I will say about Josh Green, um, his defense is locked down almost. I like uh like the last guy said, um his offense is like uh he's kind of like KP to me. Uh, I, I think I look at uh, players like in black and white, if somebody passes you the ball, they want you to shoot it, not try to create. Um, and it, that's another player like KP. If I pass you the ball, don't try to. I mean, he he can pass a little bit, but yes, just shoot it. Right, right. We, Lucas sees you're open. Don't try to. Um, and there was a couple a couple plays that like uh, like J uh, not JB but um somebody else. Um, dang it, I forgot who it was. But when Luca passes it to you, shoot it. He sees that yeah. you're open. Don't try to do anything else. <laughs> shoot it. But that's all I wanted to say, Kurt. Uh, Happy again. birthday, my guy. <laughs> thank you. I thank you. you and, coming up. Hope you uh, come back. I definitely will. Thank you. All right. All right. Coming up next, we're gonna bring up another first time caller. Uh, he sent me a DM earlier tonight asking about the locker room, which I want you guys to know if you have questions about how to do all this stuff. Send me messages. I'm happy to help answer. I want to grow our audience as much as possible. Alex, hit that unmute button if it's uh, staring at you there at the bottom of the screen and talk to me. How you doing? All right. How's it going? Can you hear me? All right. Thank you for having me. Long time listener, first time caller. Yes. Figured I'd come in here after a, I don't want to overreact to preseason, but honestly, that was a fun game. That was a lot of fun. Fun is good. That's why we're supposed to do this. Though a lot of the times it's like we're inviting pain. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. But hey, this is the time of year when it's okay to overreact to them because there hasn't been basketball in forever. So I'm here for it. Was actually at the game tonight. Awesome, and, two in a row. There. Oh yeah, and I've got to say, I agree with what you said earlier about Moses Brown looking ginormous. And I've got to say. The main thing I wanted to bring up tonight about Moses Brown is, it's like, he definitely has a lot to work on when it comes to pretty much anything basketball, but he just hustles his ass off out there. I mean, playing hard is kind of an underrated skill at points, and with aspects of what the Mavericks did last year, it's one of those things where I think a lot of them got used to standing still too much. 
Oh, and yeah. just watching how he moved, and like that's what Dwight Powell brought back once he finally was able to like physically play. And Moses is bigger and more athletic. Well, I don't know about more athletic, but he like he's four inches taller than Dwight. Like that matters, and has a huge wingspan. So it's it's that sort of thing where you know, you watch a guy just play that hard, and and I really think it's infectious. And I thought like one of the things that I, I talked about with Josh was. I, I don't know if it was particularly effective, but I enjoyed watching the, the, the kind of rotation players play defense tonight. I thought they all ran real hard, and I thought that was fun. Oh, yeah, the hustle was there from everybody. And, I mean, you could tell the communication. Uh, I don't know. This is kind of the first time I've actually been anywhere close to the court in an NBA game. But, I mean, <laughs> especially when the bench came on the floor, like there was loud, verbal, like – I got help left side. Like, everybody was yelling. And I don't know if this is a normal thing, but Moses Brown several times, either when somebody was running at him, when somebody was trying to drive to the paint, would just scream. Yeah. Like when an opposing player was driving, just scream. There's a lot going on. It was There's a lot going on with the preseason stuff. And granted, we saw a lot of this in preseason last year because I remember Josh Richardson shot like 75% from three-point range, and we all know how that went. Uh, yeah. But it, it's oh, there's there's aspects in the, in the excitement right now that's very palpable that I just had kind of forgotten was part of the game because by the by the playoffs last year, everybody was so tired. And and when you know guys are tired like that, they tend to, to not perform as, as well as, as they could have. And you know, we saw all that with, with just the way that the season ended up. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what else you got for us? Oh, that's about it. I have to say, honestly, besides the horrible post-ups KP took and the mid-rangers that I have no idea why Willie was shooting, he made the first one and tried like three <laughs> more over the course of the game. And he airballed one of them. I think the second one he took, he took one early, and then the next one he took, he airballed. And he really should have stopped there, but he just kept shooting. But other than that's, that, that's the Willie for you. Looks great. Well, I mean, good. Honestly, everybody I'm looked glad. mobile. Maxi looked good. Certainly mm-hmm. better than he did at the end of last year. I'm optimistic about this year. I like it. I'm glad to hear it. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you come back. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you. Um, where where were you sitting, if you don't mind me asking? I was um was section. I was in the ones. I was one eighteen. Ooh, so row. That's awesome. Hell, yeah. Figure it's the first game I've been to in a couple of years, so. Decided we go yeah. all out for preseason. That's oh, definitely. I mean, you got a pretty, you, you got a pretty good back. game for preseason. That's pretty good. Well, oh, thank yeah, you for joining us, Alex. I hope you come back. I'll see you next time, Kirk. Thanks for having me. Sure thing. All right, coming up next, my man Jose. Jose, how's it going? Going fine. How about yourself, Kirk? I'm enjoying myself. As Josh told me earlier, he's like, Kirk, what's it like to watch a game in Central Time Zone and not go to bed at one in the morning? And I'm like, well, I'll still probably go to bed at one in the morning. It's a it's a question of uh, you know will I get to do anything else other than Mav stuff? So I, I I will say I enjoyed my 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 watch tonight. I thought the Mavericks looked pretty good, um, and I think that there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, I also am having a hard time you know not overreacting to certain things. What right. about you? Right, uh, I feel the same way. I had a lot of fun watching the game, uh, especially in the second half because that's what I was really waiting for. I knew Luca was going to do his thing. I I was really like big on on seeing KP and seeing what he brings. I mean, uh he did have his little falls and stumbles, but the the two blocks that he had it is it, somewhat, you know, showing of of what could be uh what we could be seeing during the regular season. So I uh, I'm kind of excited for that. Again, he had his bumps and little uh fumbles but anyways i'm a Rui hunt uh jones they all look really good they they look really really exciting to watch and so does moses brown and when moses brown brought up the point about there's a lot of competition he was in line these guys really look like they're ready to play and for josh green uh, Terry, I mean, even Dwight Powell to an extent. I mean, I feel like they're on the outside looking in because these young guys just look promising. 
Oh, okay. I'm not muted. Yeah, it's it's confusing though because I really don't know what you do about this because they have 16 guys under roster, and I don't. You know, we didn't see Frank Nilakina. Trey Burke is on whatever emergency shenanigans that they're talking about with him. I don't know what you do. Uh, you know, a couple of the rookies, as was pointed out in the comments, I think it's worth mentioning that yeah, that the rookies, a lot of them are older, but they're 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 you know they're competent. And I think what frustrates the rest of us who really watch this team closely and are kind of just needing to see something from the, the 2020 rookies, uh, I guess, second, second year players. Like it's just the comparison point is guys who know how to play basketball versus guys who have like a physical tool or gift of some point that have not, or at least tonight, because I mean, this is just one game from Josh Green, but it was a it was a challenge. I mean, it was a challenge to the point where if you watch the broadcast, you know, those three guys are always they're just they're all happy warriors that cover the Mavs. You know, Falwell and and Harp and Skin, and even they were kind of like this was not a great showing for him, kind of thing, which surprised me because they're just not the kind of dudes to say that sort of thing. So I don't really know where we go with it. It is just one game. We probably shouldn't overreact too much, but it's it's the sort of thing where you know. In the next three games, as Josh Green will probably get plenty of minutes, you would like to see something. But as Josh Bo pointed out in, in what something we just recorded, I mean, Green was the worst-looking player when all when it was all young guys on the floor, and that's concerning. Right. And I've I seen a, a Twitter comp that I'm not too mad about that I don't think it's a, it's a stretch. And I've seen somebody uh, comp Amarui to Draymond Green. I, I I really like that comp. I I don't think you're expecting Ama Rui to be like the best player on the court, but during summer league, even at the fan jam on on Sunday, he he just looks really good. I, I mean, I'm bullish on him. He he's just exciting to watch. Sure. I'm, I don't know if they're sticking with the same rules that they did last year, where at a certain point they just allowed you to basically have a 17 man roster. Um, I don't know how often the, that that the two way guys will get to actually be with the with the Mavericks. Um, there's like the year prior, meaning 19 and 20, there was like a limited number of games that they were allowed to come up uh, and be part of, kind of like the senior team, whatever you want to call it. Um, but you know, with the way kid plays younger guys, um, it's it's at least worth watching uh, if, if to see if, if more of this happens. So I don't know. I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to, it's fun to watch a guy succeed because it, there's nothing more painful than watching a guy go out and really play really hard and it just not come together for him. And, and tonight all of the young guys with the exception of Josh green, like had aspects of their game shine. And that was fun. Right. Uh, remember uh, Friday they play against the Clippers. So if you're wondering when the next uh, preseason game is, it's on Friday. But that's all I had. For- that one I knew because I, I have to figure out how I'm going to cover it because my son has a little league game that night. So we're just- <laughs> I did, but yes, yeah, so that's a is, and that's their only other home game, right? Because then they play two preseason games on the road. Uh, I th- yeah, believe so. Yeah, sounds right to me. Sounds right. Well, Jose, you're Thanks fantastic. For what else do you got for us? No, nothing really. But thanks for bringing me up. Good thing, buddy. Have a good night. Um, I don't really see anybody else out there in Mavs land. It's probably for the best because this is a preseason game. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, like, you know, this is the sort of thing, this this program is one where it really only spreads by word of mouth. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of afraid to use it because they don't want to go up on stage and talk. And I don't know. I like talking to myself. I like you know, talking with you guys, answering questions. So tell people who you talk Mavs with to to download this thing and come chat with a little bit. You know, I dip in and out of these for different people. I've, you know, Mark Stein does one of these every now and again. It's fun to do these. Um, all right. So go to MavsMoneyBall.com. We have a recap and probably a couple of post-game columns because we have enough staff now where people are just kind of overanalyzing every game we have. Uh, We have a couple of more posts scheduled for tomorrow uh, and through the weekend. And, yeah, so just go to our site or like, subscribe to the podcast, tell your friends about Green Room, and we will talk to you guys a little later in the week. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. 
With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical.